At least 250 children around the country have been diagnosed with a potentially deadly illness linked to COVID-19. That number is even higher in Europe. And it's expected to continue to rise here in our country. Hundreds of possible cases of pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which is now called, referred to as, as MIS-C, are still being examined, including about a dozen children at Wolfson Children's Hospital right here in Jacksonville. Local pediatrician Dr. Carolina Sarain Kanas joins us now this morning over the phone. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. So much for having me. So the last time that we spoke, you reminded our viewers, many of whom are parents, that even though kids are less likely to get very sick from COVID-19, they can still catch it. So parents still need to make sure that their kids are socially distancing from others. And now here we are weeks later and we see why that message is so important with all of these kids now developing what is basically a dangerous side effect to a COVID-19 infection. Can you explain what Miss C is? Yes, so the actual words are for pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Hold on a second, I'm some feedback. I'm access if I can. So the things that happen it is that it's a rare, first of all, the number one thing I don't want to panic people, it is still rare. The problem is that we're having so many thousands of people who have acquired COVID that it's hard to track how many children are getting it because they don't usually have symptoms. Right from the beginning, sometimes the children might be able, have a little cold or they may be perfectly fine. They might have had a fever, got better, and then suddenly they start spiking a high fever, a rash. Um, and if your child is, and they're, they're ill, they're not just happy and playing because there are some childhood illnesses that can start out looking like this, but the children are actually pretty ill. They can get lymph node swelling. They can get a full body rash that can vary or can look like, uh, perhaps it can look like a really bad prickly heat. And, um, and then they can go into a multi-organ failure. So their heart can start having some inflammation and it can impact the coronary arteries. So it's almost like it can produce aneurysms. There's a syndrome that's similar called Kawasaki syndrome, which is also rare, but this can mimic it. Also toxic shock syndrome, where children or people get sick, they get a high fever, and usually that's caused by a bacterial infection. But because COVID can trigger our own immune system to have such a massive reaction, it, it can, our, our bodies just can't handle the amount of inflammation that it's taking on. And I think, and Doctor, what's important, to too, to point out is, is that it, some of these signs, for example, pinkness in the eye, and I could see how a parent might ignore that at first, thinking maybe it's just pink eye. Let's give it a couple mm -hmm. of days to see, you know, if it goes away. Why is that, um, uh, you know, what could be the worst thing to do? Well, you know, we don't want to ignore things. So one day, if your child is fine, that's, that's okay. We're going to watch them. But pink eye is pretty contagious anyway. But this is a deeper kind of red eye or pink eye. The mucosa, the mouth can get really red looking. So all of the areas that have mucous membranes, the tears, all of that starts getting inflamed. It's a different look. Your child is not going to look happy and playing and wanting to jump into the pool. They're going to lie around. And you're going to, you, you know, you want to suspect when you have a high fever and a child that's not acting themselves, call. You want to call your pediatrician. That's the best person to contact. And, and I think um, that what's important here also, doctor, is that, is that this may be something that happens in three or four weeks. It's not that a COVID-19, you know, infection is occurring and then this is happening a day or two later, correct? Correct. As I had mentioned earlier, the child could have been sick first with anything, could have been very mild, or could have been something a little bit more serious. And then they're fine, and then suddenly they get sick, and they get really sick very quickly. And so, so should children be wearing masks, well. Doc? It, you, well, for toddlers, it's, you don't want masks on toddlers or babies. They but, won't wear it, and of course, it could be a, a smothering risk. <laughs> but for older children, yes, children, again, will repeat that children have very poor uh, respiratory hygiene. So their noses, you know, their 
touching things. They touch their mouth. They touch their noses. They touch their eyes. And the mask, although we say that people will touch the mask, but it's also a reminder not to touch your face. So, and, and we're trying you know, to the, remind kids of that as well as, as, as adults as well. Dr. Carolina saran Canas is a local mm -hmm. pediatrician. Thank you for joining us this morning, doctor. Do You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bruce? Thank you for having me.